Welcome to another edition of What the Fatha. Uh, today I'm going to relate to you a story from almost 50 years ago. I was a young reporter in 1973, if I recall. And the Prime Minister of Pakistan at that time was Zulfi Ali Bhutto or Zulfi or ZAB or however you may call it. A tragic figure in Pakistan's history, very anti-India, uh, partly responsible for the war in 1971, but ended up tragically being hung to death by another more Islamic uh, creature of Bhutto's own creation, uh, General Ziaul Haq, but I'm digressing and I'm I'm sorry, but it was 1973 and we were sitting in the home of Mr. Bhutto in Larkana, which is a city in Sindh, Pakistan, uh, and uh, the home of Mr. Bhutto was called Al Murtaza, named after his son Murtaza, who also died a very tragic death. But while we were sitting around, I was quite junior, so obviously I was among the reporters in the second or the third row. And something struck me, and I still can't get it out of my mind. We were discussing, the Prime Minister at that time was discussing with the reporters uh, the lessons learned from the 1971 war. And the event was a documentary that had come out of Bangladesh showing what life was in Dhaka after the birth of the new country. And Mr. Bhutto said something that I cannot erase from my mind. He said, Pakistan will also have a Bangladesh carved out of India, except it will be on Pakistan's border. This is quite intriguing, you know. Uh, some of the reporters laughed. Others asked him, what did he mean? And at this time, Mr. Bhutto, I remember he had a cabinet minister, Mr. Katpar, and another gentleman, uh, not Shrikuddin Pirzada, but his name was Pirzada, he's still alive. They were sitting there and they cackled, you know, almost laughed and he had a cigar in his hand. And he said, in Sindhi, chado, sign, jane do, yani, forget it. But that line struck in my head. And I asked uh, the Prime Minister's military secretary, a gentleman by the name of Brigadier Imtiaz, I said, so what, what exactly did the PM mean by that? And he smiled. I mean, these were off the record meetings. Uh, but what was an indication that Pakistan was soon to start a movement for a separatist Khalistan, an anti-India movement embedded in the heart of India's Punjab province, and that the Pakistan intelligence agencies had been authorized in 1973 to start the movement for an independent Khalistan. Here we are in 2020 and we still have, after tens of thousands of people have died in that adventure launched by Zede Bhutto to take revenge for the loss of Bangladesh in the 1971 war. And since then I've been following this incident and wondering why on earth would a people who were eliminated, massacred in Punjab from a population of 20% to 0.1% in less than a month, cleared, eliminated, massacred, drowned in Rawalpindi, Multan, Lahore, places that were many times, none of the districts of Punjab had a Sikh majority other than Ludhiana. But they were spread all over. A Sikh was part and parcel of what Punjab looked like, still is. But they were eliminated by the Muslim League and the Muslim Zealots who created Pakistan. 
And today we find that the same people who massacred the Sikhs in 1947 are funding the Khalistan movement with the, with the effort going as far back as 1973. My goodness, look at the planning that went through this. I met many friends in Canada, where, where I live, uh, who are ardent, hardline Khalistani supporters. And I once jokingly asked one of them, who I didn't know, by the way, was secretly recording me. <laughs> he said, but you already have a Khalistan. And that is Pakistan, because Khalis means pure. And Pak is also pure. So you don't need a Khalistan. You simply need to move to Pakistan. And problem is solved, and that's Khalistan. Of course, he knew that the moment a Sikh would be seen in what is today Pakistan's Punjab, his life would be in danger. No matter what people say, the tourists who go there, say, No! You want to see the truth? You see what happened in Nankana Sahib, the birthplace of Guru Nanak, and how Muslims in that area treated the daughter of this uh, prayer leader of the Gurdwara, converted to Islam, attacked the, uh, the, the temple. So the two-faced nature of what is Pakistan should be a lesson to those who are looking for another Pakistan, which they call Khalistan. Now, by the way, there are at least 22 other Khalistans, all pure and lovely, you know, ranging from Turkey to Somalia and ever. The Sikhs should have learned a lesson by now to understand that they are inherently Indian. That Hindustan is their future. This is where the faith was born. This is what they presented and gave as a gift to the rest of India in Nanak's teachings. And why do they have to become tools in the hands of the Pakistan intelligence services, the ISI? It is quite agonizing to see this happen. And I can understand many of my friends talking about 1974. Oh, I'm sorry, 1984, truly tragic, a blot on the mark of India that centuries will not take that stain away of how innocent Sikhs were massacred in, in Delhi, how Indira Gandhi attacked a temple, a holy temple, sending in troops. This was uncalled for, small-mindedness, pettiness, things that can be resolved by talking resulted in massacres no excuse however if somebody has a problem with 1974 uh, i'm sorry 1984 and has no problem with 1947 then i challenge their integrity you can't be comfortable with a massacre that killed a million sikhs i said oh, well that's okay that's just 1947 1984 now 5,000, 50,000 Mikkel, that's what will be in my memory. No, sir, it doesn't happen that way. Great mistakes are made in the histories of nations, but you cannot whitewash a great crime and try to be friends with people who would slaughter you and then try to destroy the country that is the best thing that the Sikhs have anywhere in the world no matter what they say about Canada or Canada, it is India. And it is not just Punjab. Sikhism spread right up to and has resources and inspiration from Bihar and everywhere. A Sikh is a member, of, a proud member of the Indian family. And anyone spreading the cult of Khalistan, I have a simple message for that gentleman or lady. Sister or brother, why don't you go and try to take over Lahore, which was the capital of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, and establish your Khalistan in Gujranwala, Lahore, Rawalpindi, Khaniwal, Multan, Dera Ghazi Khan, or I could name a hundred places, but of course 
I won't miss Nankana Sa. Try to establish your Khalistan where the great Nanak roamed. If you cannot establish Khalistan in Lahore, then you're just a crook. You're trying to use and get bullied and be worked out by the Pakistan ISI to inflict damage on a country that opens its doors because you are the sons and daughters of Hindustan. Whether you're Sikh, Buddh, Jain, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, it's only India that can accommodate all of us. The moment you make a Khalistan, you're signing your own death warrant. And a lot wiser people than me, most of them Sikhs, try to inculcate this message in you. But some of my friends in Canada and Britain simply don't understand or refuse to understand because after all the Pakistani consulates in Vancouver and Toronto also have work to do and they know how to rile up of course it's not they who know it's the very nature of money that when it is spent evil comes out of it I hope my, my Sikh brothers and sisters in India and overseas do understand that Khalistan is a nightmare. Just pray that it never happens because Khalistan already exists. Its name is Pakistan. Thank you very much for being with me today. Khuda Hafiz. Ma salam. See you then. Jai Hind.